Hi class, and let's just move right along into our next topic in evolution, which is the origin of species. How do new species come about, and is that even still happening in the world today? Now remember, as we go through these videos, these videos are just to get you that major content and knowledge, and then in class, we're going to spend lots of time doing some great activities that are going to apply that knowledge and look at real-world examples. So as we go through this whole video on the origin of species, the main theme is that life is continually evolving. And why is that? Well, it goes back to our other topics in evolution. And it's because the environment is always, always changing. And so evolution, therefore, is always occurring. Um, I love this picture here. This is the picture of sort of a transitional species called TikTok. Um, and what we believe, the fossil that we have found, is the first fish to really have legs um, and come out of the water. So in this video, we're not only going to look at speciation, but we're also going to look at extinction because obviously with a changing environment, extinction might happen along with uh, speciation. So we're also going to look at that. But first, we're going to look at speciation. And so when does speciation occur is one of those things we need to understand. And that is going to happen when two populations become reproductively isolated. And I'm going to go into more detail in a little bit on that, but that's a main idea. Speciation happens when two populations can no longer interbreed with one another. Which brings us to the definition of a species. What is a species? Well, according to the biological species concept, there are a few other ways to define a species, but for our purposes, this is the best one. A species is a group of individuals capable of interbreeding and exchanging genetic information to produce fertile and viable offspring. So all of these things are important in considering a species a species. They can interbreed and they have a fertile offspring. So because of that, gene flow between members of a species is very important because it's this transfer of genes or the transfer of alleles uh, that's maintaining that species. That's also why members of species tend to look like one another um, in these examples here. Okay, well, if that's a species then. How does, say, one species become a different species or how, how does it uh, change? How do, where do new species come from? Well, because species have to maintain that interbreeding, a new species is going to come about uh, when there is reproductive isolation, when those uh, members can no longer breed with one another. And so we have two types of barriers that are going to prevent uh, re reproducing, re uh, that are going to prevent producing viable fertile offspring. And so those two types of barriers are those that happen prezygotically and those that happen postzygotically. A zygote is simply a fertilized egg. So the first group of barriers is called prezygotic. So this happens before the uh, fertilized egg is even in existence, okay, so before the sperm even meets the egg. And there are a couple ways that this can happen. Habitat isolation. If uh, two organisms are in different habitats, they're not going to mate with one another, and therefore they're, they're not going to be considered the same species. Okay, temporal isolation. If they mate during different seasons or different times of the day, they're not going to meet up to mate, and therefore they're not going to reproduce viable fertile offspring. Behavior isolation, the uh, courtship dances or uh, calls or songs, anything that goes into sort of a, a courtship ritual has to match, okay? So one member has to sort of uh, like that, that behavior in order for a mating to occur. And mechanical isolation is another one. So this is when the actual reproductive structures themselves just don't fit together. And so obviously mating cannot happen then either. And the gametic isolation is when, okay, the, the reproductive structures fit together, but the actual gametes, the egg and the sperm, don't fit together. So for some reason, that sperm cannot penetrate the egg. So these all happen before the fertilized egg even comes about. Okay, what about bit barriers? after the fertilized egg has come about. Well, these are going to prevent that hybrid. Okay, and hybrid is a new word. This is just simply offspring of two different species um, from developing into a viable fertile adult. So there are three types. Reduced hybrid viability. So yeah, you're gonna have a hybrid offspring, but it won't live very long. It will, will not live to become an adult. Reduced hybrid fertility. So the hybrid offspring will become an adult, but it just won't be able to produce offspring of its own. And a classic example of this is that a mule is actually a hybrid. It's the offspring of a horse and a donkey. And so a mule cannot uh, produce fertile offspring of its own. 
And hybrid breakdown is just simply going one more generation. Um, so the so that hybrid might be able to have offspring, but it's not. They're not going to be fertile, or they're not going to be viable for very long. Okay, so how do these barriers come about in the first place? What's going to make this happen? Well, two main ways. Allopatric speciation is when two species two species are going to become geographically separated or geographically isolated from one another. And sympatric is the opposite. This is very interesting. This is when speciation happens, but it's occurring within the same geographic area. So those members are living and cohabitating in the same environment, yet they're becoming different species. And so we're gonna take a look at each one of these uh, now. Okay, so we're just gonna worry about allopatric speciation on the left and sympatric speciation on the right. So allopatric, here's the original population. We have some sort of barrier in there that's going to separate them geographically. And because they're isolated from one another, they obviously can no longer mate. Maybe there's a mountain range in between them or a huge ocean in between them, whatever it is, they cannot mate. And so now we have two distinct species. Um, now, what, what is this little thing here? This is called a hybrid zone, when there might be uh, some hybrid um, being hybrids being made in those zones. And sympatric, here's the original um, population, and we are in the same environment. There's no barrier there, but something, and we're going to get into the details of this, is causing the two species to be, um, causing the one species to become two. And so that is sympatric speciation. Okay, allopatric speciation, um, a very uh, easy example to understand would be something like the Grand Canyon. And we do have evidence of a type of squirrel um, that was uh, isolated from, um, from it, the rest of the population. And over time, they evolved and adapted to their new environment. And because they adapted so much to their new environment, they are now different from one another. And they are now considered two different species because they no longer mate with one another. And we know this from biogeographic information, where they live, what the, where their niches are, and from genetic data. We can take blood samples from them and we can compare their, their gene sequences and we can say, yes, in fact, they are two different species now. Sympatric speciation, I'll give you two examples here. Um, these are called cichlids and they live in Lake Victoria in Africa. And they live in the same lake, but look how different they are. They're two different species. And this has happened because of two things. Sexual selection, uh, males for, for only certain colors and types of females, and habitat differentiation. They feed on different things because they actually have different jaws and different teeth. So these two things have become very powerful that within the same environment, that same lake, they're actually becoming two different species. And the second way this can happen is through something called polyploidy. Now this only happens in plants. Polyploidy only happens in plants. And this is when during meiosis, um, just really quickly, some random event happens, some mutation, whether it's a duplication or a deletion, most often it's a duplication. So the parent was 2N as far as its DNA. And because of this duplication event, the offspring is now 4N. And so what happens is, is within one generation, because of polyploidy, the offspring can no longer mate with the parent because 4N and 2N are not compatible. So now this offspring is an entirely new species. It's very, very interesting. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, well, how quickly is this really happening? Can I see this happen outside my front door? Well, it's very highly variable, and scientists have concluded that there are probably two models on how quickly speciation can occur. The first is called gradualism, and by looking at the fossil record on, in these different strata, we see a gradual change in the fossils. So maybe a little bit of a change here, and then a little bit of a further change. The other model is called punctuated equilibrium. And so this is where in one strata we have something that looks like this, and in the very next strata it is an entirely different fossil, an entirely different species. So it was punctuated. It happened very quickly. And some fossils that we have support this model, and some fossils we have support this model. So two models there. Okay, let's move into extinction now, because remember, um, evolution is always happening because the environment is always changing. Um, Species extinction rates are sometimes rapid, especially when there's a stressful environment or a highly changing environment. There have been five major extinctions over the past 500 million years, and in each, 50% or more of marine species went extinct. Now you might be thinking, why just marine species? How did that happen? Well, two hypotheses. Volcanism led to low oxygen levels and, and low dissolved oxygen in the water, or possibly a meteorite impact occurred. 
We have also contributed to extinction, unfortunately. So human impact, we've been destroying habitats, it's threatening many species, especially in the rainforest. In the last 400 years, more than 1,000 species have gone extinct. This is between 100 and 1,000 times that normal background rate of what, we'd, what we would expect to see for um, extinction. So we need to sort of ask ourselves, is this the sixth ma major extinction event? And we're going to take a closer look at all of the human impact when we study ecology later in the year. Adaptive radiation is a specific type of speciation that comes about due, due to new available ecological niches. And I put it in with extinction because a lot of times adaptive radiation occurs following a mass extinction. When we wipe out a whole um, bunch of populations, and so now we have new opportunities for individuals and populations to sort of exploit. There's new environments there, and so new species come about because of these new environments. So they adapt to these new environments that are available. Adaptive radiation can also come about when groups possess major evolutionary innovations, so plants with seeds, armored body coverings. If they can use that adaptation in many different environments, they're going to adapt to those environments and sort of radiate out and form new species. And when little competition exists, adaptive radiation will occur as well. And so the, um, the Galapagos finches is a perfect example of adaptive radiation. So these finches all have slightly different beaks because they have exploited their slightly different food sources and their environment. So they all came from one ancestral species, but because of their different environments, they adaptively radiated and became new species in their new environment. Okay, so just to sort of conclude and end here, please keep in mind that populations of organisms continue to evolve. You might not see new species form in your lifetime, but it is happening because the environment is always changing. So I want you to take your first assignment is to pick one of these topics and write a brief paragraph on how it shows evolution still happening today. Um, how it shows speciation or extinction or evolution. So the Red Queen hypothesis or antibiotic resistance. And second assignment, Three short questions for you to answer in your end of video notes that we will go over in class and we'll also discuss the video notes as well.